kind of an interesting thing because I, I wish I would see that more in schools where it wasn't like someone would go into an English class, do all their writing, goes on paper, and then they never refer back to it again. Like, how do we see our own growth? And it's like, how do you do right. that? How do you do that in your, how do you do that in your own classrooms? Like, is there ways that we can do that as teachers in our classrooms where we could kind of like go back and look at our own progression? And, and what we do? Yeah. 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 Um, one of the things that I, I just instituted recently is, um, you know, our, our district has, has been kind of flexing a little bit on, do we hold kids accountable to due dates or do we penalize them if things come in late or do we let them rewrite, redo? Um, and I just found that giving them a really, really like clear guidelines makes mm -hmm. a difference. And so I've started this deal where if they turn it in on time, um, they have an entire week to make any corrections or right. changes based on my feedback to improve their grade without any kind of penalty at all. It's just mm -hmm. a complete replacement grade. And if they don't turn it in on time, uh, they forfeit that opportunity. Hmm. Um, and so it has really driven, um, I, I just surveyed my kids at the end of term three, about two weeks ago, um, asked them to give advice to the incoming fourth term kids. And the overwhelming hmm. um, advice was turn things in on time, right. take advantage, take advantage of the feedback and the opportunity to fix things. Um, and, and I don't know that I would have seen that in a prior class if I didn't have that policy. Um, they need a little bit of an incentive to want to do it, but um, otherwise they were just kind of turning stuff in that was just for me to read. And, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't really help them. But if they're turning in a resume that they're actually right. going to potentially use, um, getting a B on it for me, what good does that do them? But turning it in, getting a B, and then making all the changes right. and turning it into an A, that might actually help them somewhere down the line. So I, I want them to to make the changes to improve because that's the whole goal is that everybody is at the A level when mm -hmm. they're done with my class because they've mastered what I had to share with them. And, um, and your, pro your process, so I, I've used this analogy before, right? So like, let's say you're a band teacher, right? Mm -hmm. And like, shout out to all the band teachers. Like if you, like hearing a kid play the clarinet for the first time must be the most the horrible thing ever, right? Like that would suck. <laughs> and, and so, you know, like by the end of your time with those kids, you should want to be able just to sit back and listen. Like you got them to mm -hmm. a point where you actually want to listen to them. And it's like, right. but we then using that same analogy for like English teachers, I'm sure, you know, at a point you're mm -hmm. like, oh, this is terrible. Like, this is just right. And then what you're doing is getting mm -hmm. them to the point where like, yeah, I would actually read this. Like, hey, this resume is, a, right. is like a kid. And I think that's part of the process is that we're taking these kids from a place where it's like, yeah, of course they're not like, you know, if you gave me a clarinet, it's not like just kids. You gave me a clarinet right now. It would be, this would be no mm -hmm. one would listen to this podcast. And nobody listens as it is right now, but you know. Clarinet, maybe, maybe that would draw some viewers, but you want to get kids to that point. But if you don't right. actually kind of build that feedback and, and connect it. So I, I really love that you you're sharing that.